This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, how to improve food safety. Norovirus is believed to be responsible for about 60% of all the foodborne illnesses that occur in the United States. Now that's 60% of 50 million foodborne infections. Foodborne illnesses when Radio Health Journal returns. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. The Alzheimer's Association is encouraging everyone to learn the truth about Alzheimer's. First, Alzheimer's is not normal aging, and with a wide variety of possible symptoms, it's more than just memory loss. The truth is that Alzheimer's disease is fatal, and even though it can't be prevented, cured, or even slowed, early detection matters. According to Ruth Drew, Director of Family and Information Services of the Alzheimer's Association. An early diagnosis of Alzheimer's allows people living with the disease and their families more time to plan for the future. It also allows these individuals to get the most out of treatments that may address symptoms and help maintain independence longer. They may also be able to participate in a clinical trial to help researchers discover a cure. It's important for people living with Alzheimer's to access care and services early. So so they and their families can live the best life possible. Take time to learn the truth about Alzheimer's disease. Get started at alz.org slash truths. That's alz.org slash truths. Last month, the government announced a huge recall of more than 350 frozen fruits and vegetables sold under 42 different brands. Foods like green beans, peas, broccoli, and blueberries. Contamination with listeria bacteria was the reason, and some experts aren't surprised. The food supply, such as the case of listeria, is quite vulnerable, particularly for ready-to-eat foods. Listeria is a bacteria that lives in soils, it lives in water, so it's always out there. It's, in fact, we typically eat it whenever we eat some fresh produce, but at low levels it doesn't cause a problem. However, in higher concentrations, listeria can be a killer, according to Dr. Mark Tamplin, author of the new book, Fodge, and former food safety advisor to both the World Health Organization and U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In fact, he says listeria can kill 20% of the people who are sickened with it. Listeria was responsible for the biggest outbreak of foodborne illness in American history in 2011 when contaminated cantaloupe killed 33 people. It affected caramel apples in 2014 and ice cream products in 2015. And Tamplin says outbreaks are increasing as processors get bigger and bigger. Where we've seen the greatest increase in total foodborne illnesses and outbreaks have been in the category of the ready-to-eat produce. And the largest outbreaks we've seen have originated from products that have come from big producers, like you'd expect in California. And again, as a side effect to our food supply chain and how it's changing, is we have consolidation. We have large corporations producing huge quantities of product. And when something goes wrong, we see a lot of people get infected and some die. As you might surmise, looking at the wide variety of foods contaminated by listeria, the problem isn't on the farm, it's in the processing plant. That's because listeria thrives in cold temperatures that prevent other pathogens from growing. This organism likes cold environments, so we keep our processing plants cold, but this organism, listeria, is such a persistent problem they set up home in things like the drains in the floor. They like to grow in the cracks of the conveyor belts and places you know, where it's difficult to clean and sanitize. And in fact, we know some of the big product recalls with products such as sandwich meats, those things that we don't typically cook, have been related to when they're spraying the room down at the end of the day, those aerosols, you know, the drain and the water goes up and it contaminates surfaces and can contaminate the food products. So listeria by far, is the biggest challenge that the food industry faces. Now, you might wonder, isn't the government supposed to do inspections to prevent those kinds of outbreaks? Tamplin says yes, and the government generally does a pretty good job. But he says testing can never be the best safety valve. The ability to detect a pathogen in a lot of product is very low. So what we do in industry is we use a process, a food safety system called hazard analysis, critical control points, or HACCP, and that simply means that we monitor critical control points in the processing, and through monitoring those, that could be things like sanitizing, 
properly heating things and cooking things, if we do those things right, we know that the odds of a pathogen persisting in the food are quite low. Where we have the biggest gap right now and where government and industry both need to be working better is before the processing plant for things like vegetables. We're relying upon industry using what are called voluntary HACCP programs. And while we're seeing this increase in foodborne illness, in these types of ready-to-eat vegetable products, the industry does not come under the same level of regulation, mandatory regulation and enforcement as we see with the food processors. That means there's less regulation for foods that aren't frozen or cooked before we eat them, like our fresh lettuce and carrots. We've also seen outbreaks associated with produce that are believed to be linked to soil, the dust from, say, a poultry farm that's nearby or a cattle farm where these pathogens live in high concentrations. The dust and the water can get over onto a produce farm, and once it's on the produce, these pathogens bind quite tightly to the produce, and we know that rinsing does not remove all of the bacteria. In fact, it removes just a small percentage. So we have to trust that everything has been done well before we bring those products into our homes. Certainly it removes the dirt, the grit, the filth that we don't want to consume. Many of those products that are in bags says on the label that they've been triple washed in some cases, but I always think it's important for consumers to have a greater role in food safety, and by that I mean to rinse it one more time before they consume it. For some other foods, a lot more caution in the kitchen is required. A quite high percentage of poultry, somewhere around 40 to 60 percent that we bring into our kitchen in a raw form can contain salmonella and another organism that's called Campylobacter. Not many people have heard of that one, but it's the leading cause of bacterial foodborne illness in the United States. However, Tamplin says the number one overall cause of foodborne illness dwarfs bacterial causes. It's a virus called norovirus, and when it makes us sick, we usually have only ourselves to blame. Norovirus is believed to be responsible for about 60 percent of all the foodborne illnesses that occur in the United States. Now, that's 60 percent of 50 million foodborne infections that happen in the United States every year. In the case of norovirus, though, we know it only comes from one animal, and that's a human. It only lives in a human gut. So anytime anyone gets sick, and again, that's 60 percent of all the infections, we know it's someone who went to the bathroom, did not wash their hands, and then handled a ready-to-eat food, meaning a food that you're not going to cook before you consume. That means that despite government inspections and precautions of the food industry, the biggest factor in whether we ever get a foodborne illness is how we handle food ourselves once we get it home. Never keep a food in that danger zone, a food that allows bacteria to grow, in the danger zone, which is between 40 and 140 degrees. So those are typically things like meats you know, moist kind of products. If we don't keep it in that range for more than four hours, the pathogens don't have a chance to grow. The other thing we need to do is consumers, if they cook their product to the right temperature, then they'll kill off all the bad organisms. But one of the biggest things that we forget to do in our homes is properly cleaning and sanitizing. And cross-contamination can occur. In, for example, a typical scenario is someone thaws chicken out in their sink, They don't clean and sanitize the sink. Then they fill up the sink with water. They put in their lettuce, and then they serve a salad and get everyone in the family and their friends sick. Those real simple things, you know, cooking properly, not keeping things in the danger zone more than four hours, good hand washing, cleaning, and sanitizing can almost eliminate the possibility of getting serious infections. You can find out more about all our guests through links on our website, radiohealthjournal.net. You can find archives of our segments there, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher. Our production director is Sean Waldron. I'm Nancy Benson. Radio Health Journal returns with medical notes in just a moment. As Americans, we love to snack. In fact, according to a recent report by Mintel, 94% of Americans snack each day. While two-thirds of us admit to snacking to satisfy a craving, one-third are trying to snack on healthier foods. Some foods can meet both needs. Registered dietitian Courtney Romano is a health advisor for the California Table Grape Commission. Fresh grapes are a perfect snack because not only do they taste great, they're healthy too. A bonus is the grapes are ripe and ready to eat when you buy them. 
and they're a packable snack that you can bring with you when you're out and about. Grapes from California are also a natural source of antioxidants and other polyphenols and may contribute to heart health. With just 90 calories for a three-quarter cup serving, no fat or cholesterol, and virtually no sodium, fresh grapes are a smart choice. For more information, visit grapesfromcalifornia.com. Medical Notes this week. People who have had a mini-stroke have a 1,000 times higher risk of a major stroke soon thereafter compared to the rest of us. But a study in the journal The Lancet shows that taking aspirin right away can cut the risk of a major stroke in the next few weeks by as much as 80%. Symptoms of a mini-stroke, also known as a transient ischemic attack, or TIA, are similar to those of a major stroke, but people who have a mini-stroke often do nothing about it. Researchers say they should take aspirin and seek medical help immediately. People who are overweight are at a higher risk of several kinds of cancer, but once people are diagnosed with cancer, the overweight may have a better chance of survival. Colon cancer is the latest example, according to a study in the journal JAMA Oncology. It shows that among people diagnosed with colon cancer, those who are overweight but not obese are 55% less likely to die from it compared to normal weight patients. Researchers can't explain why the paradox occurs. And finally, potatoes have a lot of things going for them. For example, they're high in potassium. But a new study in the journal BMJ finds that too many potatoes can raise your risk of high blood pressure almost any way they're prepared. Eating four or more servings of baked, boiled, or mashed potatoes per week raises the risk of high blood pressure by 11%, while fried potatoes increase the risk by 17%. But you can eat potato chips. They didn't raise the risk at all. And that's Medical Notes this week. More in a moment. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you can donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-835-1478. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. Call 1-800-835-1478. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher for donating. Call now, 1-800-835-1478. That's 1-800-835-1478. Thank you for listening to Radio Health Journal, a production of MediaTrax Communications. If you enjoyed this week's show, please leave a review on iTunes or share it with a friend. You can find more Radio Health Journal stories about health, science, and technology on iTunes, Stitcher, and at RadioHealthJournal.net.